Yeah, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, been a really, really productive uh, off season as far as our men's basketball program. Really excited about uh, the five kids that we have coming in here to YSU. I uh, can't thank my staff and really our players. I thought our players did a tremendous job um, of really showing these guys uh, what Youngstown State uh, you know, university has to offer and then also our men's basketball program. So we wanted to, you know, with this class, we wanted to add uh, some versatility. Obviously, we had some needs that we needed to address. We feel like we've done a little bit of both. Um, and then in the process, we become older. Uh, I think that's the name of the game in college basketball is to, to get a little bit older um, throughout your roster. And then uh, we wanted to get a deeper roster. You know, we wanted to, to add some guys where we could play uh, more guys than we ever have. So uh, I give our, our guys a lot of credit. I thought it was a really, really productive uh, recruiting. Um, and really, we just can't wait till they get here. We are ecstatic uh, about this class. Can't wait to see these kids here. Uh, the next couple of weeks and, and get to work. Yeah, you know, with Adrian, um, it's, uh, you know, what you're finding with the portal, it's all about relationships, right? So Adrian Nelson, Coach Jason Slay and I recruited really, really hard uh, five years ago. Uh, he was one of the top priority guys when we got to Youngstown. And uh, we were just too late, you know, to be honest with you. We got the job a little bit late. Um, so I think that really, really helps in, in this portal um, in the way, you know, recruiting goes right now. Uh, we're really happy to get Adrian Nelson. You know, first and foremost, comes from a great program in Northern Kentucky. He's been coached by two really, really good coaches, uh, great coaches, not good coaches, but great coaches, um, and Coach Horn and Coach Brandon. But, Dane, anymore, I think you're going to see more and more of that. Um, it's not going to be anything new to be able to play against, a, a, you know, maybe one of our former players. Uh, you know, Malik Green, the same thing. You know, we played against Malik this year with Canisius. Um, and he was a fabulous player. You know, he gave us, I think he had 19 points against us here at the Beagley Center. So uh, I think you'll see more and more of that as the uh, recruiting keeps continuing. Well, I think the portal um, has given players a lot of different options, right? So I think the whole reasoning for the portal was there's so many waivers before, Ryan, about guys trying to get waivers to be eligible to play right away somewhere else. Uh, I think you have to adapt to the times. Um, you know, uh, Nas Bohannon was in here about seven, eight days ago. He and I talked for two, three hours. Uh, he spent the day with us and just talked about his experience, talked about the portal, talked about the direction of our sport. Um, and I and it was a great conversation. Um, and I think I learned a great deal uh, with that. I think you just have to be able to have a good balance. Uh, some years you might do really well in the portal. Some years you may not. Um, but I think the most important recruits you have are the ones you have inside your program. So we have really, really good players coming back. Uh, obviously, being able to keep Dwayne Cohill in Youngstown for a senior season, uh, in my opinion, one of the top, uh, if not the top player in this conference, uh, was a huge, huge win for us. That, that was one of our biggest wins of the off, se off season. Uh, but to be able to add some of the versatility, some of the guards, some of the fr uh, front court guys, uh, we really play with forwards, um, has been really, really good. And our guys are excited. You know, the returning guys are really excited about uh, what they see. You know, one of the publications had our recruiting class ranked 27th in the country uh, through the portal uh, with adding those four players. Um, so that's a really, really big testament to our current players, and I think uh, they're a big part of it. Well, I think each guy provides something a little bit different, Dana. It's um, really, really anticipating these guys getting here, right? To be able to see how, what this is going to look like. Um, but you start off with John Lovelace. Uh, you know, he's a six, seven freshman that's very, very talented. I think in a normal year, uh, probably would have a much 
bigger uh, conferences offers. Um, I think you're finding that a little bit in the portal. The high school players aren't getting as recruited as much. So we felt like John, the very first time I saw him, I, I just fell in love with him. Uh, Brandon Rush, Cleveland kid, um, fairly Dickinson transfer, 6'3". Um, it's going to provide a lot on both sides of the floor. Can score the basketball, can really play defense. Um, I've known Brandon and his father a long time. You know, they're Cleveland guys. Um, you know, we probably should have took them the first time. And uh, I was very, very honest and open with Brandon and Eric, his father, on the visit. I said, listen, we don't want to make the same mistake twice. Um, he played some AAU basketball with my son. Um, and my son actually, you know, grew up with Dwayne Cohill. So it's kind of... I guess, Dane, I'm getting old uh, when you, you start to think about some of the relationships we have with these guys. It goes back 20 years with uh, Brandon Rush. Uh, Bryce McBride from Eastern Michigan, uh, very, very good player. Um, has had some huge games for Eastern Michigan, played for two different coaches. Um, he's going to provide a lot for us. He can play multiple positions, uh, great defender, can score the basketball, great out of pick and rolls. And then with Malik Green and uh, Adrian Nelson, they give us a ton of versatility up front. So I think what it does, number one, is we're very talented, uh, we're very old, um, and we they we will have great depth. Uh, it'll probably be the, the most depth I've had from guys that have played really meaningful minutes of college basketball. I think that's what you're trying to find. So with all these guys, with the four transfers and Johnny, uh, we feel that we're much more athletic, very versatile. Um, and I think the common theme with all these guys, Dana, number one, they wanted to be here. Uh, they saw the vision. They, they saw the success the last three years. Um, I think with Adrian and Malik, the style of play with our front court players, with Brandon and Bryce, what they saw is our uh, style of play with the pick and rolls and the way we play multiple guards on the floor. Uh, all of these kids really fit to what we needed. Um, and we have one scholarship left. And uh, we're not really sure what we're going to do with the last scholarship, what direction we're going to go. Um, but I really like the position we're in right now. Uh, to be one of the better teams um, on paper. As I told all these guys, it's on paper, right? You got to develop, uh, and there's no secret formula. We really got to mesh this group, and we got to get to work. Uh, really, in June is when we'll start. Is there a big advantage for you as a coach with the transfer portal, just in recruiting, considering you might not know how a high school kid translates to the college level. There's tape and plenty of stuff on these kids that are in the portal right now that kind of proven Yeah, I think it's a great question. I mean, I think that's what a lot of the coaches around the country are asking themselves every single day. What do we want our program to look like? What are we trying to build? Uh, when we first got here, it was a four-year process, right? We get a kid as a high school player, and we develop them, and we get them better. I certainly think we've changed our philosophy this year with this recruiting class and our needs. Uh, but I also think we're in a great location. Uh, I think being right here in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, the state of Ohio has produced a lot of great players. Uh, the state of Michigan, the state of Indiana, uh, West Virginia. Um, there's a lot of really good bordering states that we are able to get into some of those areas. And a lot of these kids are, you know, their parents and their support system are going to be very, very close to where they're at. Uh, I also think your style of play plays a big part of it. I think each year is going to be different uh, with your needs. This was a big class for us. This was going to be a big class. Uh, we wanted to surround our returning players. Uh, we've got a lot of guys that have played a lot of meaningful basketball. Um, you know, second most wins and all that sort of stuff last year. There was a lot to build off of. And we wanted to make sure that our main guys understood we're trying to take that next step. Um, and how that looks right now is is through the portal. Uh, but you certainly get a more experienced uh, guy if you go that route. And that's what we decided to do this year. I think each year will be a little bit different. Uh, we still got to get good high school talent and develop those guys. There's so many good high school players out there that are slipping through the cracks because of the portal. So we're not going to rule out anything. Last year, one of our best players was an NAI transfer, a one-year kid. Uh, Dwayne Cohill was a first-year transfer last year, one of the best guards in the league. So we have the formula to do it, um, and it's been done la in last year's class. Now we got to do it this year with just a few more guys. But if they put winning at the forefront, which all these kids have, um, we'll be just fine. Good for 
You know what I think it is now, Dana, building a team. Um, I think you're building a team from year to year, um, but you also have a culture. You also have a style of play. You also have a fan base. You also have um, different things that come with, with your team that really kind of make up a college basketball program. I think there's a lot of coaches and a, a lot of fans that are frustrated by the portal. Uh, for us this year, we couldn't have done any better. Uh, we hit uh, every single guy we recruited, uh, we were able to get. Uh, but just a couple kids. Um, so, you know, one of the things, Dana, I learned from Coach Huggins, and, and I'll take this as long as I coach, don't waste time in recruiting, right? So you have to be able to identify the kids that you have a shot uh, to get, what makes sense for both the player and then also the university. And we've been able to do that in this year's class. We, we didn't waste a whole lot of time. Uh, nowadays, you're doing your first conversation, could be on the phone, then you're getting into a Zoom call uh, to really kind of show them some things. And then when they get here in Youngstown, it's really um, just getting them around your players and, and selling the style of play in your league. You know, our league um, – has been a big selling point. You know, we feel like this year um, there's been a lot of good players leave the league. Uh, so and able to keep Dwayne Cohill here in Youngstown, I think that kind of shows you um, what we're trying to do. I think 10 of the 15 best players on the three teams have all transferred out. Uh, we're able to keep one of the best. Um, and I credit that um, to him really wanting to finish something that, that you know, he committed to. Um, but you know, kids kids can change. There's certainly uh, that factor. You know, if it, nowadays if you're not playing, right, you don't have that role that you envision yourself having. You have access to be able to go play right away. I think that's what's changed, Dana. Before um, it was kind of set up for like you had to wait your turn. Nowadays, you don't really have to wait your turn. So you got to adapt. You got to adjust to it. Um, and you got to make sure that each guy in the roster really understands his role. We tried to do that in the offseason. We were very, very uh, – had great open communication with our players. Uh, everybody kind of came in like, hey, this is what I want to see my role as. We kind of talked about it and then kind of identified, hey, this is going to be your role. Uh, and, of course, you're going to lose some guys from year to year. Uh, I think back in the day uh, when that happened, uh, everybody was kind of shocked and surprised. Nowadays, you're seeing on average, I think it's almost five players from every team in the country or four, whatever the numbers are. Um, so you just have to adapt to it. I, I don't know if we know the answer fully, whether it's good or bad. Um, I happen to think that this year for us, for our program, for this year, I think it was really good. Well, what I've what we've found, um, our staff and really my wife uh, has found this out. The month of April is really busy, right? So usually, um, you know, your season ends in March. You take April. You go to the to the final four. You come back. You work your guys out for a couple weeks. Start mapping out your summer. Well, nowadays, uh, April, April and May. You know, it could even go into May and possibly even June is going to be very, very busy recruiting. Uh, I think that's the biggest difference, that it's really extended the recruiting period because of so many transfers. Um, so you have to do a really, really good job of immediately after the season figuring out, okay, here's what my roster is going to look like, and then here's who we're going to try to identify. Uh, we have a couple um, – things in place uh, internally analytics wise we use two different companies a lot of our recruiting um, has really went that way um, and it's it's there's a company that literally ranks every uh, transfer in division one basketball we're hoping they get to division two and junior college and it ki kind of gives them a rating uh, and as you plug in your guys you kind of see where your net can go you kind of see where your offensive numbers your defensive numbers can go it's been very beneficial for me for two years we're using it uh, now for scheduling um, you know this is the latest the schedule has ever been for me typically I'm letting Dana know or Joel know or you know guys that are you guys are close with our program hey here's what we have lined up for next year as far as our schedule right now we're having a difficult time with that uh, why is that? We're coming off three consecutive winning seasons. We've won, we won 19 games. We have a lot of guys back. We've added some really talented players. But I also think what's happened is with the portal, nobody really knows which, what team, uh, what these teams are going to look like. So the scheduling aspect has changed too. 
So I'll spend really the next probably uh, week to 10 days trying to finalize this schedule. You know, our goal is we have 11 opportunities. We want to play six to seven home games this year inside the Beagley Center. We're going to play two Power Five teams on the road. Uh, we've got a return game with Central Michigan and Canisius. Uh, so we've got a little bit of work to do with our schedule even. So um, it's demanding. It's, it's a lot of work, but uh, you have to change with the times. And I think uh, our staff has done a really good job with that. And I think our players have too. And we want all our guys to be happy, right? I mean – you know, Luke and Owen, Daniel, some of the guys that decided to leave. The biggest thing is, guys, you only get to play one time, right? You get college basketball one time. Uh, sometimes it's five years. Sometimes it's four years. Whatever you get to play, uh, you just want to have a great opportunity. You want to play. Most guys want to play nowadays um, and play big minutes. So uh, we totally understand that. I think a lot of the coaches around the country understand that. And uh, you just have to build your roster each year, how wh whatever your needs are. Mm. Mm. You mentioned Dwayne Cole doesn't have to be comfortable tonight. So what do you have to do to make sure Dwayne is comfortable in this? You know, I think um what Dwayne saw was a lot of success. Um one of the one of the neat comments, Dwayne and I talk a lot. He said, Coach, everything you kinda envisioned and you kind of sold me on really happened. Right. So we told him he's going to be in a ton of pick and rolls. We knew he was going to be a major focal point of our team. Uh, we told him we we're going to go out this offseason and recruit the best team we could possibly get uh, and surround him with great players. Not only that, we're going to make sure some of our returning players come back and we're all on the same mission to win this Horizon League tournament. Um, and, and cut down net meaningful nets, something we've been, you know, really, really working hard to do. Uh, a couple times I felt like we were close to pushing over the top. You know, sometimes you don't get those breaks. But I think that's why Dwayne stayed. Uh, I think he knows he's going to be a big focal point. I think he got a chance to win player of the year. Um, but more importantly to him, I think he wants to win the tournament. Uh, I think he wants to win and get to the NCAA tournament. I think he really likes it in Youngstown, Dana. I think he really, really genuinely has some great teammates. I think he really, really likes our fan base. Um, he's an hour from his, from his home. And, um, you know, I think that's why he stayed. Uh, because certainly he would be a guy, if he went in the portal, uh, as we all know, would be very, very attractive. So um, really, really happy that he stayed now. Man, is it harder to keep your players or harder to get kids here? I, I don't know the, that, that answer. That That's a really uh, interesting question. Um, hmm. I don't know because I felt like we did a pretty good job of getting the guys we wanted to come. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I just think we're in the early stages of the portal. We're in the early stages – of name, image, and likeness. Uh, we're in the early stages of this new era of college basketball. This is all very new to the coaches, to the players, to the fans. Um, I think we're all changing, we're all adapting, we're all learning, right? That's the most important thing. You're trying to learn from year to year. Um, but certainly on paper, certainly there's a buzz about our recruiting class. There's a buzz about our women's uh, recruiting class. There's a buzz about the returning players on both teams. Um, it's a good time to be a Penguin. It, it's going to be really exciting, I think, again. Did you build this on paper in your six years? Ooh. Yeah, probably the deepest. Um, you know, Nas and, and that group, Nas and Michael and Garrett, that, that group was – that group was pretty good. You know, those kids won a lot of games. Um, you know, they all stayed. Two of them stayed for five years. Nana stayed for four. Uh, that team, that, that group was pretty special, too. Um, this one has more players. You know, this one, we, we brought in more guys. So it'll have to be, as I keep telling all these guys, you know, they're all, everybody's really excited, right? We're all excited. We, we feel like we hit um, just an awesome class, but I think it's to be determined. You know, I think uh, the rest of the league has added some really good players. There's, you know, Northern Kentucky, uh, Fort Wayne, Oakland, uh, a lot of new coaches in the league. You know, we've went uh, two coaching changes. You know, Bart Lundy at Cleveland, Cleveland State has a new coach. Um, so it's there's a lot of change inside the Horizon League. Um, so we'll have to see how all that plays out. But, you know, my goal, Dana, this year is we, we want multiple games on national television. Right. So we had league meetings last uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, 
you know, we're 2-0 and on national TV. Uh, we got that opportunity two years ago. Didn't get a chance last year. We've only hosted one ever in the history uh, of our program on national TV. Um, you know, I'm going to send emails. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to pump it up. We want a game inside here on national TV. Uh, I think this group is worthy of it. Um, so that that's my goal. Uh, we want to get back uh, on the national TV slate for the Horizon League, and uh, it would be a really neat thing. Yeah, you know, the, the cool thing has been all these guys are on the phone nonstop. They're on group text messages. Um, you know, they're really communicating with one another. They're really excited to get here. Um, both Brandon and Adrian uh, are very, very familiar with our program. Malik Green and, and Adrian Nelson are both getting a master's degree. Uh, actually, Malik is getting his second master's degree. Uh, so, uh, just understanding the educational process, we're trying to map out the classes, uh, the summer school program. There's a lot of moving parts, Joel. I think uh, it, it's not as easy uh, to transfer as everybody thinks it is. But I think the transition, it's our job as coaches to kind of kind of make it uh, a really, really smooth transition. You bring them in the summer. Uh, you only get eight weeks to work them out. We'll probably use seven. Uh, we never use eight, so we'll probably do seven weeks. Um, some of the older guys will make it optional for a couple weeks, uh, but they're all they're all ready to go. Like they're all like, coach, when can we move in? When can we get into the edge? Uh, so there's that itch right now. This is kind of that weird time of college basketball. Um, they're finishing up their studies. No basketball this week. No basketball next week. And then they get about a month off, and then we bring them back in June. And just understanding different philosophies, offense, defense, really watching them play, like. To go back to Dana's question, like how are they going to affect our team and what's things going to look like, um, that'll be determined really a lot in the summer. Uh, I'm excited to just sit back and watch, and if you guys ever want to come in and watch them play open gym and see what they look like, I I'm excited just to watch uh, for a few days, and then we'll certainly implement our style of play. And, and really it's just getting those guys to play to their strengths. I think each guy – brings a lot of value to our basketball team. And I think with the returning guys, they're only going to get better. You know, you're looking at some really, really good returning players. Uh, you know, you, obviously we've talked about Dwayne, but you've got Shamar, you've got Will Dunn, you've got Harp. Uh, Colin Gurley, you guys have not seen yet. Um, very, very good player. Ja'Cory Owens and uh, Josh Irwin, those two guys' ceilings are really, really high. They're going to get a chance to compete against Malik and Adrian every single day. Um, it's only going to get those guys better. Um, and Will Dunn really came into his own about the midpoint of the season. So uh, just want to be really versatile, want to be really unselfish, uh, want to really be driven uh, to just get better each day, want to challenge ourselves in the, in the non-conference, want to play a couple power fives, um, trying to get our uh, practice court done. Uh, we've got a, uh, a court over in Stanball that, that ourselves and women's basketball and uh, women's volleyball, uh, we're all trying to uh, wrap this project up. We're trying to play another guarantee game to put some funds uh, for that facility so we'd be able to go over there and practice. Um, because really right now, guys, from about 9 to 7 o'clock at night, you have three teams sharing one basketball court. Um, if we can get this court done over there, um, and make it our home on that middle court, but at the, also the same time try, trying to get some tractable walls where the general students can still use it. Um, it'd be a win-win for all three programs. All the programs could be done every day by about four o'clock. Um, so that's really our goal right now. So we're trying to get our schedule done. Uh, we got one more, uh, you know, recruit to sign. And then really trying to get into some fundraising things, and that's been my main focus uh, with Ron and, and some of the other administrators here because I think it could really help all three programs.